Behind me is what is the uh, Chamber of Commerce area of Harry's Days. We're still in the downtown area. This is four very large tents that are put up to have crafters in it. And uh, what it provides is an area for people to circulate in and out to go in and actually buy crafts that are handmade by uh, individuals. This is one part of Harry's Days. The second part of Harry's Days is actually up at the Visitor Center above Truman Dam. That is where the 1800s village is. And that's where the old time crafters are. And actually they're doing things from the 1800s like weaving baskets, uh, making grain, uh, kettle corn, all kinds of items like that. And what we provide is buses to actually shuttle people from the downtown up to the visit center and back so they can enjoy both events. Uh, Heritage Days is now over 30 years old and it is a major attraction in this area. Really, we uh, use this to really set up our fall and the winter events. And on a weekend, a good weekend like this one, we'll attract as much as 15, maybe 20,000 people. What you see here is really basically Ozark products. You know, handcraft wood products, uh, baskets, floral arrangements, very, very many items. But what the Chamber of Commerce makes sure is, is handcrafted products. It's not something that's imported from uh, China or somewhere else. This is actually Missouri uh, products or products from out of state that fit in with this, but they are handcrafted. We, I started it because they broke all their toys so easily, so I took some old lumber and just made toys they couldn't destroy. And, so and they're then, undestructible. <laughs> and so then I, I finally decided, well, maybe somebody else would like to have toys that were made of wood and that they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't break easily. So that's, that's how I got started. And then we wanted to, if they're not fancy, they're rustic, so we named them Rusty's Rustic Toys. And then we had to add Jeremiah's Jaunty Jalopy so that he got a, a, a share of the building. The first time I saw Painted Gourd, I fell in love with it and decided I could do that myself. <laughs> so it is a process. You have to buy the, the gourd. It's raw. It's filthy dirty. <laughs> and you have to clean it inside and out and let it uh, dry for several days before you can base coat it and paint it. This is a, a rug loom. I'm making a table runner now. It's warped up the width for table runners and place mats. I'm just now starting out on this one. It'll be about 25 inches long when we get through with it. This is a uh, Union 36 loom made by the uh, Union Loom Company out of Boonville, New York and it's about 70 years old. They went out of business in 1940. There's 168 warp strings on here, on this one, and they're set up on the head of the frames here, uh, alternating so I can raise or lower half of them at a time. They're hooked with chains down to my treadle. I step on the treadle on the left side here. This outside string in his base goes up, which crosses them. If I change my feet, the, right side and goes down and then I can get all the way back to the fabric. It's a locking system for the rugs. It's, they call them the uh, rag rug style rugs because the pioneers wore their clothing to rags and then they patch it and they wear it. They patch it when it finally got so bad they couldn't patch it anymore. They make rugs out of them because it's better than the dirt floors they had. Uh, my daughter and son-in-law have a um, camper here and they fish a lot. So I came down with them for the weekend. And then knowing that it was going to be the festival, I enjoyed that too. And I like, I'm a people watcher. <laughs> Where's the activity? What do you think of the event? Very successful, you say? I would say very. It, I think it was better than last year. I really do. But no, I, I enjoy. I enjoy people. I, I think it's just 
beautiful to be out. Be with my kids. <laughs> It, it really is. It, it really is. It's uh, my kids that really do enjoy the people down here and the fishing and you know it's just. In fact, they'll have a fish fry here pretty soon. They caught so many fish today it was unreal. How do you guys make it down here? Bring that mic up. Well, this this event is known worldwide, so you know we've planned for years to be down here at one time to be part of the Heritage Day festivities. And what do you guys think about so far? I mean, I know you... Well, the bus looks nice, <laughs> and so you know, so we're excited about the bus ride. Talk really. about the turnout, though, and how, how much it's oh, turnout yeah. to have friends to come down. Surprised how um, how many people down here. But it's a beautiful day. I don't know if it's a good crowd or a bad crowd, but it looks like it's a good it's a good day for Warsaw and the businesses and everything that uh, they need to keep the money flowing. Good stimulus package right here. So what do you think about Warsaw? I mean, we like the fantastic town. vibe. Cool town. Awesome. I love this town. I love the, the water being right there and the small town atmosphere. It's awesome. They want to buy this love house it. right here. So yeah, we actually went and looked at this house here just today. Yeah. So, yeah, it might be a place to retire. How does this compare to Hawaii? Oh, that's Kim. <laughs> California, LA. California. Well, it's it's similar, slower in not a lot of different ways, but uh, no, it's it's small town, slow moving, nice people, very sociable crowd, good beer. What else do you need? Yeah. This is Heritage Days. It's a celebration of American history, mostly the Ozark history of the 1800s. Uh, they got a cabin here you can look at. Uh, they're building a general store. It's not done yet. Uh, an exhibition of uh, hay thrashing here. There's mountain men over there. All kinds of crafters through the area that uh, old time crafters. But of course, they didn't have a Walmart or mom and dad. They had to make everything for themselves. There's soap makers, uh, broom makers, wood carvings, all kinds of things of the, showing the crafts and skills of the people uh, from the 1800s. Uh, I've done a lot of research. I, uh, most reenactors focus on one time period, uh, either a mountain man or civil war. But I was in theater in college, so I focused trying to do different kind of characters. So I've done almost all of American history, different kind of characters. Colonial, uh, Mark Twain, uh, Cole Younger, Abraham Lincoln. I did a guy from the 30s one time, Franklin Lane. Just I, like, I love history, I love acting, and it just collided and reenacted. Well, we're uh, Hastinger Bluff Pioneer Heritage Association. We're about a 15 to 16 member board. Uh, Heritage Day started in 1981. My wife, Nyla, and I had uh, was recruited to come over and do tools and the logs and everything like that in, in uh, 86. So we've been with them since 86 and uh, been a member of the board. I think I got started on the board about 1998 or so. I've been president the last three years. So. We've got a, our group is dedicated to preserving history and, uh, and so it can be interpreted for the uh, people to enjoy. So this uh, cabin complex back here is named the El Elmore Complex after Ed Elmore who started the Heritage Days in 1981. He passed away of a heart attack in 1988. Uh, everybody enjoyed it so much they decided to keep it, keep it going. <laughs> And it's just everybody pooled together, and it's just been a, started a tradition that's been going ever since. It was, uh, all this was pretty well self-sufficient. These people that lived in this part of the country that moved in in the 1840s and 1850s, which this represents back here, I try to represent a uh, basically pre-Civil War homestead. Uh, you didn't get to town maybe once or twice a year. Everything was pretty self-sufficient. You raised your own animals, your own grain and corn and stuff. And, and it was just a pretty rough old existence right then. I talked to the Corps, got permission from the Corps to build this cabin in memory of Ed Elmore. And uh, then the, uh, after I got the cabin done and they seen, seen what I did, they uh, 
they said uh, they gave me the go ahead from the other buildings. I, I kept, I'd ask them, I said, get permission. We had, we had to do it legally. But uh, pretty well, whatever we want to build over here, we've got a good working relationship with the Corps. We've got a general store coming in this fall after the, the uh, park closes. And we're uh, going to build an uh, 1800s uh, general store called the K Singer Bluff Store. And it will be located down towards the Hooper House. Over to the uh, over to my left here is a blacksmith shop. Uh, uh, Fred Arnhold from uh, Bates City, Missouri, up Odessa, has uh, been working with me for the last six or seven years. Uh, he's doing blacksmithing. Uh, Mel Robinette is helping him. Uh, behind the to, to my right over here is the uh, dog trot cedar uh, barn. It's called a dog trot barn because of the breezeway, and it consists of a uh, corn crib and a feed and tack room and then the back part of it is the stanchions where they milk the cow. The uh, part on the other side over here where the door is open is, uh, is a tool shed, it's a tool room. And actually it's just my little private tool museum. What you see in there is not what an average pioneer would have. I just got a lot of tools of a lot of the period, you know. But uh, they would have a place to, inside to keep, their, keep uh, some of their tools out of the weather. We're trying to work for an apprenticeship program. We're trying to get young people to come in. I'm trying to get somebody to want to learn how to hew logs with the broad axe. I uh, haven't had much uh, luck on that. We've been uh, doing rail splitting, and uh, my wife does bobbin lace. She's on the other side of the cabin doing 1500s bobbin lace. We would just like to keep as a, the people that started this show, as we get older and being dropping out of this thing, getting too old to participate in it, we're wanting younger people to come along and take over where we left off and keep this going. It's uh, kind of a problem right now. Uh, we've, we've, got a, we've got a lot of young people interested, but we sure need any more. If there's anybody out there that wants to learn some of these skills, we can work them into an apprentice program. Mel Gilbert, uh, he's our uh, logistics man. He's the one that's responsible for getting all this thing flowing and running smooth at the parking and everything. And he was uh, asking about uh, how do you get a hold of him. This, this man would be, uh, uh, he's got a website and stuff. I'm a he head of volunteers and my phone number is 417-733-2358. We put in over 3,000 volunteer man hours a year with the three main events that we have and in addition to coordinating the activities leading up to it. So we believe that that's a lot of man hours. Uh, 150 to 200 of those man hours are provided by personnel from the Whiteman Air Force Base, which have been helping with parking for over 10 years. In fact, uh, last year, Congressman Ike Skelton presented them a plaque for having over 1,000 volunteer man hours uh, uh, at this particular event. As our t-shirts uh, say, for eight dollars a t-shirt, uh, you can step back into the 1800s at the Warsaw, Warsaw Pioneer Heritage Day. And there's not very many events that you can go to that is as pure as, as this one. You can go to others that have a lot of combinations of pioneer and modern crafts, but this one seems to be one of the more authentic ones uh, in this part of the state. Powder wedge is a big solid piece of steel drilled out, takes about a third of a can of powder. You got a touch hole where you put your fuse. You drive that into the end of the log, touch that off, it would split the log wide open. Just split it down there. Made it into smaller pieces that they could drag it up there with, to the house with the horses and work it up. 